All right, deep divers, get ready. We're diving into the world of puppies today. Always fun. We're taking that dog talk episode you sent yeah. and figuring out how to turn our homes into, well, puppy wonderlands. And you know what? That's important. A lot of new puppy parents, they're just so excited to bring that new puppy home. I get it. They completely forget to actually get their house ready. Yeah, it's like you wouldn't bring a newborn home from the hospital and hand them a hammer. Right. Dog talk really, really hit on this whole idea of you got to think like a puppy to really puppy proof your home. And that's not easy. No. Okay. Because, you know, we just we look at a dangling cord. We know, OK, we see that every day. But a puppy, they see something to tug on. Right. Oh, absolutely. Dog talk really opened my eyes to how like what we see is just ordinary stuff. Right. To them, it's like this big adventure waiting to happen. It's true. And those electrical cords. Oh, my God. Yeah big one they don't you know puppies don't have any concept of electrocution so those cords are just like a chew toy to them it's like a noodle exactly cover them up use those cord covers tuck them away you know one thing i thought was genius that they mentioned on dog talk is bitter apple spray oh yeah yeah harmless to dogs but they hate the taste it's like puppy kryptonite <laughs> exactly anything you don't want them chewing on let's we'll spray it you spray it and they're like nope not touching that see ya Okay, let's talk about this. House plants. This one really got me. Oh, yeah. Because I, I am a house plant enthusiast. Okay. I love having plants around. Yeah. But dog talk really made me question some of my choices. Well, yeah, because some of those plants we think, oh, they're natural, they're fine. Right, exactly. But like aloe vera, peace lilies, those can be toxic to dog. I had no idea. And if you're not sure, do a quick search online. There's so many resources you can find pet safe plants. Adding pet safe plant guide to my shopping list. Yeah. Okay. Then there are those hazards that honestly never would have crossed my mind. Like like my junk drawer. Apparently it's a puppy death trap. Oh yeah, yeah. Buttons, batteries, anything small. Exactly. Choking hazard. Choking hazard. Get on your hands and knees and do a serious floor sweep. That was like the number one takeaway from dog talk. It's amazing what you find when you actually get down on their level. It is. And speaking of things we don't think about, that cabinet under the sink. Oh, yeah. Cleaning supplies. It's like a chemical amusement park. Detergents, anything that could be toxic. Get some childproof locks. Better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. And it's not just the everyday cleaners. Right. Dog talk also reminded me about fertilizers, gardening chemicals. Oh, my right. Things that we maybe keep in the garage or the shed. Right, which a puppy can get into. Which, oh, a determined puppy will find a way. They will. It's all about thinking of those what-if scenarios, right? Yes, yes. What if my puppy gets into the garage? What if my puppy gets into that cabinet? It's those things we don't always think about. Dog talk was good for that. They really were. Mm. So we talked about hazards, but what about making our homes comfy for our pups? You know, those safe havens. Dog Talk talked about that. They did. They did. And it's about, well, you got to give your puppy freedom, let them explore. But you also have to set some boundaries, right? Right. Tired puppy is a good puppy. Right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. And speaking of tired puppies, Dog Talk mentioned play areas. Is that literally just like sectioning off a spot and making it a puppy play zone? Yeah. Make it intentional. You can use baby gates or those exercise pens. Give them a clear boundary. Okay, okay. That way they feel like they have their own little space. Their own little puppy apartment. Speaking of which, they also talked about crates. I have to say, I'm not a huge crate fan. I always feel bad. Yeah, a lot of people think of crates as punishment. Yeah. But think about it this way. In the wild, dogs, they like to find those small dens. Oh, okay. So it's kind of in their nature to seek those out. So a crate, if it's the right size, it can actually make them feel more secure. Huh. It's like their little haven. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, those first few months, everything is so new to them. Make overwhelming. So having that little spot that's theirs can really help with that anxiety. That makes a lot of sense. So it's not about confining them. It's about giving them that, like, home base. Exactly. Especially when we can't keep an eye on them 24-7, which dog talk. Also mentioned puppy proofing rooms, which kind of the same concept, right? Same concept. You basically take all those precautions we talked about, but you apply them to, you know, maybe it's a spare bedroom, maybe it's a laundry room. Okay. Yeah. And it's just completely safe. A little puppy oasis. Exactly. Exactly. It's perfect for when you know you can't be there to redirect every chewing adventure. Yes. Okay. So we've talked about making spaces for our pups. What about our spaces, our furniture? Dog Talk really stressed 
how important it is to protect those couches. Yes, because, let's face it, puppies and furniture. Recipe for disaster. Total disaster, especially those corners. Dog talk mentioned corner guards. Or even that bitter apple spray we talked about. Uh, yeah, yeah, on anything, really. Anything. And washable rugs. Essential. Essential. Accidents happen. Right. Right. And you want to be prepared. Oh, for sure. They also mentioned baby gates, which I thought was interesting. Not just to block off rooms, but like to kind of section off areas within a room. Absolutely. Maybe you have a really, I don't know, an antique table. <laughs> you don't want the puppy anywhere near it. Baby gate is perfect for that. Strategic placement. So we've talked about inside. What about outside? Because Dog Talk really got into puppy proofing your yard, which I don't know, people don't always think about. No, they don't. We think, oh, fresh air, they'll be fine. Yeah. But it's a whole other set of challenges. What are some of the big things that we should be thinking about? Fences. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. And I don't just mean making sure the latch works. Right. Puppies can find the tiniest little gap. They're like little escape artists. Mm. Exactly. So you got to check for any holes, loose boards, even potential digging spots. Wow. It's that... like a full-on inspection. Yeah. And just like inside, think about those plants, certain types of mulch too, like mm. cocoa mulch, not good for dogs. Oh, really? Yeah. If they eat it, it can be toxic. It's amazing what we take for granted, right? It is. It is. And then, you know, another thing, water hazards. You might not have a pool, but even just a bird bath oh, yeah. can be a hazard for a puppy. Especially if they like to splash around. Exactly. So, yeah, any kind of water, you got to be really careful. Supervise, supervise, supervise. Always supervise. And here's something else, you know, we might not think about this, but Dog Talk mentioned tools gardening equipment oh like rakes hoses all that stuff yeah yeah a puppy could get tangled could get hurt so got to be mindful of that it's like dog talk gave us those puppy goggles exactly to see the world through their eyes to see all know. the dangers well speaking of things that aren't always dangerous unless you get their own yeah. kind toys dog talk really stressed how important the right toys are they are and not just to keep them entertained right right chewing it's an instinct for puppies Right? Yeah. So you got to give them something to chew on. So what makes a good chew toy? I'll be honest. I've definitely made the mistake of buying those fluffy toys. Oh, yeah. Those don't last long. Two seconds? Two seconds. They're destroyed. You got to get those durable chew toys, the ones that are actually made for puppies. The tough ones. The tough ones. And yeah. you know what else is good? Puzzle toys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are great for mental stimulation. It's like brain games for puppies. Exactly. It keeps them entertained and it makes them think. Which wears them out, which I'm sure every puppy parent appreciates. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, another good tip, toy rotation. Oh, yeah. Swish out their toys every few days. Keeps it interesting. Keeps it interesting, prevents boredom. They're like little kids. They get bored with the same old toys. They do. They do. Wow. Okay, so we've covered a lot today. Hazards, safe spaces, toys, the great outdoors. It's amazing how much goes into making a home puppy ready. It's a lot. But like Dog Talk said, a little preparation goes a long way. It really does. So deep divers, as you embark on your own puppy proofing adventure, remember, safety first, have fun with it, and never underestimate a good chew toy. And you know, just enjoy it. They grow up so fast. They do. All right, deep divers, until next time, happy diving.